We are sitting cross-legged on my bed right now because we are going to walk. And I have put off making this video for a very long time and I figured it's time because I feel the best about myself and my diet, well not not a diet, but my eating habits, all of this stuff, I feel the best about that, I feel the best about it now as I ever have. I don't know if that makes sense, probably not correct grammar. I guess the reason I put off making this video for so long is simply because I know I don't look like I have an eating disorder. I'm nearly 200 pounds and I don't look like I have an eating disorder. I don't look like I have an eating disorder, but I do. In comparison, there are some people that have suffered for five years, ten years, their entire life. So two years really isn't a huge number, but you know, my psychological problems leading up to this entire thing is they run a lot deeper and a lot earlier than just November 2014. All throughout my life, I've been chubby, bigger, heavier, overweight, whatever. I've I've always been overweight, um, and. I mean, not so much until I was seven, but after my father passed away, that's when the weight started gaining. That's when the weight, when I started putting on a lot of weight. Okay. But I got teased for my weight a lot in elementary school. You know, I had people call me Big Mac and fat and tub tub and all this stuff. It didn't really bother me because I just, you know, I just kind of said, screw you, like, whatever, I'm happy. Didn't do anything about it. Um, and. When I, the summer after grade 8, I like, tried to go on a healthy rampage, you know, do all of this exercising and, you know, I was eating healthy and that didn't last long because, you know, eating healthy never lasts long, especially when you're restricting your calories. Then, the summer after grade 9, I went to band camp. And if you remember me, after grade 9, that summer, I made a video called What Happens at Band Camp Goes on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's my first video ever on this channel, so if you want to watch it, I'll link it down below. It's hilarious. I The video quality is terrible. I have braces. I look like a wreck. But while I was at band camp, I had my phone, I was on Twitter, and I found the eating disorder community of Twitter. And that kind of reinstated in my mind how I, you know, hated being fat, I hated feeling ugly in comparison to my peers, like, you know, in elementary school and high school, I always compared myself to the popular kids, the pretty kids, you know, I compared myself to my friends all the time, it was awful. When I got home from band camp, I decided right then and there that I was going to starve myself. I'm not going to sugarcoat my thoughts in this video because I knew exactly what I was doing. It wasn't, I'm just going to restrict my calories a little bit because I want to lose a little bit of weight. No, it was like, I'm going to starve myself. I basically stopped eating. I would eat literally seven saltine crackers in one day. I would eat the serving size of premium plus unsalted top crackers for the whole day. And I slept all the time. My papa actually took me to the doctor because he thought I was depressed, because all I did was sleep and I didn't eat. And my friend Sam found my Twitter and she made me promise to start eating again. But because I'd only been doing this for a month, it wasn't really hard to stop. So I stopped starving myself and I was fine. In November of 2014, I was gearing up for tri service, which is a formal dinner and dance from, like for cadets. And the dress that I wanted to wear, which I actually have sitting in front of me right now, <laughs> didn't fit. Granted. In September of 2013 when I wore it to my aunt's wedding it was tight then too so obviously I had gained a little bit of weight because that's what happens yearly you gain weight it was tight and it didn't fit and I wanted to wear that dress so naturally I thought I'm going to start starving myself again because I know that it worked in the past and it'll work now and I started counting my calories and doing water fasts and eventually it became an obsession. I couldn't go a day without counting my calories. If I ate more than 1,000, I would feel like shit if I binged, which happens a lot because you know the science behind starving yourself. You can only starve yourself for so long before your body is screaming for food and then you just binge. You eat whatever's in front of you and then you feel like shit. I didn't really get like serious about this until January of 2015 and in between January and August, I lost 35 pounds. I was miserable. I was completely fucking miserable. You trick yourself into thinking this is what you want because you really want to lose weight, you want to be skinny, you want this. That's not you. That is the eating disorder. That is what it does to you. There's, it's like there's this little voice in the back of your mind telling you you need to lose weight. 
you have to, you need to be skinny, and it becomes uncontrollable. I couldn't go a day without counting my calories. I felt like shit if I ate too much. I felt, I felt like shit if I ate over 800 calories, and that's insanely dangerous. It's not even, like, you can't survive on 800 calories. I would try my hardest to eat 500 or lower. Um, but in May, I finally told somebody. I told my friends James and Bryce, and they had very opposite reactions, but we're gonna focus on James for a minute. And I know he's probably never gonna see this video, but I am eternally grateful for how he helped me, even though I was a stubborn ass bitch. I was so lucky to have friends like that. So I told James, and basically he was like, you need to get help. If this is not something you can fight on your own. And because of who I am, I don't like talking about my problems. I like to think that I can take everything on my own, but there are some things that you can. And there was actually one night, I was a cadet, this was like annual practice, and I felt like shit. I just mentally and physically, I felt like shit. And during break, he asked me if I was okay, and I said yes. And of course I said yes, because I don't like talking about my problems, especially not in person. I don't like confrontation. I got home that night and I texted, or yeah, I texted him and I was like, I lied, I'm not fine, I feel like shit. And so he asked if he could call me and I said yes. And he was like, okay, I'll be like 10 minutes. Then 20 minutes rolls around. He's like, sorry, it took so long. I can call you now. So he called me and basically what he told me was why he took so long was because he was searching up treatment options and you know counseling facilities in our area and one of them was actually the one that my papa took me to when he thought I was depressed and just the fact that I had a friend who took the time out of his night you know he'd school the next morning it had already been a really long ass night of standing for three hours like to have a friend who took the time to look up options for me to take to get better because he wanted me to get better, he wanted me to be happy, he cared about, you know, my happiness and everything. That's just incredible. In May, I decided to go vegetarian because I wanted to see if that could help. And so I started trying to eat more and, you know, not weigh myself and feel good about myself and everything like that. And I relapsed two weeks after that. Only this time, it wasn't so much like a physical relapse as opposed to a mental relapse. So I was eating a lot. If I ate, I ate a lot. So I tried to fast as often as possible. I fasted for four days before. And basically the entire summer I was miserable. I was obsessed with weighing myself. I tried to find the lowest calorie options of everything as possible. I drank so much coffee that I think my head would have fallen off. I started to come upon the vegan lifestyle. And I watched Brianna Jack Fruitson, who's channel I will link below. She is one of the many vegans who have helped her eating disorder through veganism. And I was just like, this has worked for her and loads of other people. Maybe it can work for me. So I tried it. Uh, September, the beginning of September, I became vegan. And I was vegan for about a month. And then because of financial stuff, it I just couldn't be vegan. For that month, I was the happiest I'd ever been. I had gotten, I obviously gained initial weight, but after that, I went back down to my lowest weight. I didn't go back to eating meat, but I went back to eating dairy and like things with dairy in them. I still avoided direct dairy, but I like ate donuts and shit like that. And even though I was eating those really bad things, you know, the thoughts didn't really, I mean, I had thoughts. But the urges weren't really that strong. And in January, I lost my virginity. That caused, that spiked a, like a mini relapse. I didn't actually go through with it really. But, you know, because my body was being exposed in ways that it hadn't been before. I just felt really insecure about my weight. And I noticed like, oh my god, I'm eating so much disgusting stuff. Like, this is gross. So, you know, those thoughts kind of continued on throughout the next three months. And then I went vegan again. And everything was fine. I, and then I moved here and it was just at the time when I first moved everything was chaotic you know it was just a lot easier to eat whatever was there my mom didn't really have a lot of vegan options in her house because nobody in the house was vegan I went back to eating animal products and I went back to feeling like shit about myself he kind of sparked my most recent relapse 
because I've always made like side comments about what I ate and he was like, you shouldn't be eating that, like as my age. Never really made direct comments about my weight or anything like that, but just like the comments about what I was eating was enough to spark a relapse. So I tried fasting. I fasted for the whole, this was Sunday, so I, a Sunday. I fasted for the whole day and you know, I was obviously hungry. Um, and then I went out for a walk with him and I went back to his house and you know, I slept over. I woke up, I wasn't hungry, I felt fine. He started playing video games and I started feeling nauseous and I thought it was just because like he had his arms around me like this and his controller was on my stomach and I thought it was because, you know, I was nauseous because the vibrations from the game controller. So, you know, whatever. I rolled over and I had a nap. Hopefully, I thought that would help, but yeah. Anyways, I got home because my mom was making mac and cheese, or she was supposed to make mac and cheese. She didn't end up making mac and, mac and cheese because Amy's friend Nora is like, it was intolerant, so they were making a stir fry, and I was just kind of, I was kind of salty, you know, I was like, as a major, I really wanted mac and cheese. So I was like, I'm going to make mac and cheese for myself, it's fine. I had a piece of cheese, and then I was going to make some s'more type things, and I started to feel faint. I started to feel lightheaded, so I sat down at the table, and prior to this, you know, I... I got like had a not like often often but relatively often like it would happen like once every two weeks maybe once a week something like that and I could like sit and it would pass this time it was not passing it was persistent it got worse I almost blocked out a couple times I almost vomited and my mom called the ambulance and I went to the hospital and turns out I have anemia so I need to get iron pills and I'm also gonna start taking B12 and multivitamins so I'm gonna be good you know I'm good at the time wasn't enough it wasn't a big enough wake-up call for me i wasn't i didn't feel like i should stop trying to starve myself i felt like i should keep going and i'm looking back on that now and i'm like going to the hospital for almost passing out wasn't enough what if i'd actually passed out what if i'd fallen over and hit my head off something what if you know I had gotten to the point, what if I had kept on with this and gotten to the point where I damaged my body so badly? I just watched an episode of Grey's Anatomy where this girl was starving herself and she literally didn't make it through surgery because her heart was not strong enough. I don't want to die. I have family and I have friends and I have college and I have a life and I forgot to call the OSAP office today again. Yeah, I'm not happy with my weight and I won't be for a while, but I decided on July 12th like a week ago today, that I was gonna officially go back to being vegan permanently. And I am very happy with that decision because this is what helped me the first time, this is what helped me the second time, and this is what's gonna help me the third time. And if you are struggling with an eating disorder, first of all, I recommend going to see somebody, getting some help, but I also recommend veganism. Now, I understand for some people the idea of cutting out certain foods from your life is kind of terrifying because it's like a restriction, a restrictive mindset. But veganism, veganism is not restrictive whatsoever. I am so happy that I've gone back to being vegan because I feel so great all the time. It's amazing and I recommend it. But first and foremost, if you have an eating disorder, please, please, please talk to somebody. Losing weight and feeling skinny and feeling beautiful or trying to impress somebody or trying to impress yourself or just all of that, it's not worth losing your life and that's what could happen if you keep going. In the beginning of this video, I say, I said I have an eating disorder and I have one. Not had, I'm not better, I'm just doing better. I'm not cured, I'm not recovered. I am working on it. It's only been about two weeks since that episode happened where I had to go to the hospital. An eating disorder is something that you will have for the rest of your life, whether you are recovered or not, because it's a mental disorder. It's not something that just goes away. You can overcome the urges and the voices, and it takes time, and it takes effort, and it takes commitment, and it takes wanting to get better.